tutorial on machine learning basics with TensorFlow. Um, in this tutorial, we will be learning more about text classification using TensorFlow Hub and uh, we will be classifying movies reviews as positive or negative uh, using the text of the review and this is a very good example of binary classification or we say it also known as two class classification and it's a very important and widely applicable kind of machine learning problem in this tutorial we'll be demonstrating the application of transfer learning with tensorflow hub and kerat um, in case you are uh, you're not familiar with transfer learning just to give you a briefings or an idea about transfer learning transfer learning is uh, used uh, like uh, we make use of transfer learning uh, for solving problem and applying it to like let's say uh, we have already gained some knowledge while solving a different problem and we apply it to a different but somehow related problem for let, let I can give you a very good example let's say uh, we are solving a problem about recognizing a car so in this example knowledge gained while learning to recognize a car can be used to extend to recognize a truck so yep um, this is like a brief about transfer learning you can you can look more you will get a very you can get more resources over uh, internet about transfer learning i will not go in much deeper all right here we'll be using imdb data set means internet movie data set which contains around 50000 movie reviews and we'll be splitting our uh, data set into 25000 and 25000 first 25000 for training and other 25000 for reviews for the testing uh, the training and the testing sets are well balanced so meaning that they can contain uh, like equal number of positive reviews and negative re reviews and in this notebook we are go going to use Keras API to build and train our models in TensorFlow and also TensorFlow Hub that is a library and a platform for transfer learning all right so let's get started so very first thing we'll import all the libraries so let's go start from future from the import uh, absolute absolute underscore import comma uh, first we'll be division comma uh, print function underscore function function and unicode literal Unicode, Unicode underscore literals like e -R -A. Unicode literals, all right, and we'll be importing numpy. Import numpy as np, and we'll be using try and catch block try and percentage tensor flow flow underscore version 2.x and we'll be putting up except exception and giving it a pass all right so let's import tensor flow as tf we will install tensorflow hub so for installing tensorflow hub we require pip install so let's do pip install i was getting i think pip install tensor flow dash hub also we'll be needing tensorflow database so install tensorflow database oh, sorry not database data set <laughs> so i'm sorry <laughs> data set and also we'll be importing tensorflow Hub. So 
four underscore hub as hub and port tensorflow tensorflow underscore data sets as TFTS. All right. So let's run. One thing, always make sure that your run type is on the same. Let it complete. So it's showing requirement already satisfied. Requirement already satisfied. If you are doing for the first time, it will download or it will install. So for me, it's showing requirement already satisfied. Just let me check my run type. Um, yes, I just put it on GPU and save. And again, run all. Alright, so let's check the version of the TensorFlow. So for checking, I like I can just put the print statement. Print report version and give a space, comma tf dot underscore underscore version and yep, got it. Let's see which version we are working with. Ah, yeah, it says Pro version 2. And uh, also let's print the eager mode. Print eager mode. tf dot execute t underscore eager d and we can close in bracket and also let's print the hub version let's flow hub version print hub version and hub underscore oh sorry hub dot underscore is the version yeah that should do it and also whether GPS port is available or not let's just check that out and GPU is available and let's put a if condition if tf dot config dot config dot experimental experimental dot list underscore physical devices I'm getting it physical devices and let's put you and if not there else not even not finally all right let's execute it again Yes, our eager mode is true, version 
our version is 0 0.70.0 and GPU is available all right our everything is set up perfect all right now it's time to download the data set so we'll be downloading IMDB data set which is already available in TensorFlow data sets so we'll be splitting the training set into 60 and 40 percent so we'll end up with uh, around 15,000 examples uh, which will be for training and 10,000 examples for validation and 25,000 examples for testing okay and uh, to do so first of all let's declare an array train underscore validation underscore split equals to tfds it stands for tensorflow dataset dot split function dot split dot train dot subsplit okay and we'll be subsplitting in 16 40 percent so yeah six comma four all right oh i'm sorry it should have been be the square bracket six comma four let's close that bracket fine and uh, let's put our train train underscore data comma validation underscore data and comma test underscore data will come from tfds dot load and load us let's put a bracket it's going to load us on the name of the data set name equals to imd underscore reviews which is the name of the data set comma uh, split equals to train underscore validation underscore split comma tfds dot split dot test comma S underscore supervised equals to true and yeah let's run it Yep, it's downloading and preparing the data sets. Let's give it a couple of seconds. Alright, it has downloaded the data set. Okay, that's great. Alright, now let's explore the data. Now let's take a moment to understand the format of the data each example is a sentence representing the movie review and the corresponding level the sentence is not pre-processed in any way and the label is uh, an integer value of either 0 or 1 where 0 is a negative review and 1 is a positive review okay so let's explore the data first uh, let me just put up the text uh, explore the data all right and exploring the data let's first uh, uh first print the first 10 example so let's do that train underscore examples underscore batch comma train underscore labels underscore batch now that equals to next Iter train underscore data dot batch 
and let's put the batch value to be 10 and let's do this train underscore examples underscore batch so let's see the first 10 examples um yeah we got some result the first 10 example is something like as a lifelong fan of dickens i have and blah 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 and all you can you can just read out and when you do it in your uh, notebook collab notebooks uh, i'm just skipping that part you can read it out yourself um all right uh, we can also uh, print out our first uh, 10 levels so let's see train underscore labels underscore batch all right so let's see is it a uh, positive or negative um yep i'm getting like one one i'm getting ra which is like three four five six uh first six reviews are positive then seventh review is negative eighth is positive ninth is positive and the tenth is negative all right that's fine now let's build our neural network model uh, let's build the model um okay all right the neural network which is uh, going to be created will be by uh, uh, stacking up the layers and this requires three main architectural decisions uh, number one uh, like how we are going to represent the text uh, then how many layers we are going to use in the model and how many hidden units to use for each layer so these three are the main architectural decision we will we have to take so in this tutorial the input data consists of sentences right text sentences review and the levels to predict either it's zero or one right so one way to represent the text is to convert sentences into embedding vectors. We can use a pre-trained text embedding as the first layer which will have three advantages. We don't have to worry about text pre-processing. Uh, we can benefit from transfer learning and the embedding has a fixed size so it's like simpler to process. So for this tutorial we will use a pre-trained mod pre model that is like a pre-trained text embedding model from TensorFlow Hub and um, that is called tensorflow um, and that is called like google tensorflow to preview genius civil 20 they are like there are lots of pre-trained models i will give the link in the description you can just have a look on them and accordingly like you can choose which one you can work with you can play with them all right so let's first create our keras layer that uses our tensorflow hub model to embed the sentences and try it out on a couple of input example one thing to note that no matter the length of the input text the output shape of the embedding is num examples and embedding underscore dimension let, let, let's just check it out then we can understand it in a much more better manner so let's first put our embedding embedding equals to uh, https colon slash slash df dot df hub dot dv slash google slash df2 dash preview um, slash genius dash swivel dash train zero bin slash one all right, I, I will give the link in the description uh, so you won't be having difficulty in typing. You can just copy and paste it up. All right, and let's declare our layer, our underscore layer equals to equals to hub dot keras layer keras underscore layer keras so keras layer and embedding from our input shape. Uh, input underscore shape with blank comma uh, d type d type equals to df dot string so string type comma trainable 
equals to true let's close this bracket and last is we have to uh, let's put up up underscore layer um, frame underscore examples underscore patch and let it be three let's run it um I'm not getting a syntax error it's saying invalid syntax input underscore shape so I think um, oh all right, all right I got it I'm not fine but I'm really sorry this was some silly mistake and let's run it all right so we have created our first keras layer and we are using a tester flow hub model to embed the sentences and we have tried it out on a couple of input examples um, it's giving us an array all right so now let's build the full model so model equals to tf dot keras so we are going to use a sequential model sequential and we are going to model dot add we are going to add the hub layer hub underscore layer and model dot add we are going to add dot keras dot layer dense and we're going to put up 60 neurons and the activation function we are going to use is ReLU so activation equals to ReLU and also we are going to use another dense layer model dot add tf dot keras dot layers dot dense uh, one neuron will be enough for the output and the activation function that we are going to use activation equals to is sigmoid sigmoid and let's also see the architecture of a model so for seeing that model dot summary let's run it all right so you can see we have sequential model and the first layer is a TensorFlow hub layer. This layer uses a pre-trained SAVE model to map a sentence into its embedding vector. Uh, and the pre-trained text embedding model that we are using is from this link, if you can just see this one. And that's a Swivel something, genius dash Swivel something. And that splits the sentence into tokens, embeds each tokens, and then combines the embedding and the resulting dimensions are num underscore examples and embedding underscore dimensions. The fixed length output vector is piped through a fully connected dense layer with 16 hidden units, if you can see this one. And the last layer is densely connected, fully connected with a single output node using the sigmoid activation function. 
the value is a float between 0 and 1 representing a probability or a confidence level so let's compile the model oh we have already done so loss function and optimizer like a model needs a loss function and an optimizer for a training since this is a binary classification problem and the model outputs a probability like a single unit layer with a sigmoid activation that gives us the probability we'll use binary cross entropy loss function uh, this isn't only choice for a loss function you can also use mean squared error but generally binary cross entropy is better for dealing with probabilities it measures the distance between probability distribution or in our case between the ground truth distribution and the predictions later when we are exploring regression problems say to predict the price of a house or a car we'll use uh, we'll see how to use another loss function called mean squared error and uh, now let's uh, let's configure our loss function and the optimizer all right so let me just add up a code so model dot compile and let's put our optimizer optimizer to be Adam equal to Adam and and loss equals to loss equals to uh, we we were using binary underscore cross entropy and we'll need matrix let's put our matrix to accuracy matrix equals to accuracy accuracy all right we're done with our loss function and optimizer so let's run it Yes, that's compiled. Now let's train the model. All right, so let's train equals to model dot. I'm going to use model fit method and uh, the model dot fit. I'm going to use train train underscore data dot shuffle yes shuffle and we will use thousand let's put it to ten thousand and let's put our batch to be five hundred and twelve come on uh, let's put epochs let's put it to 20 this is the number of time training will be done comma uh, let's put our validation underscore data equals to validation underscore data dot batch and that's going to be 512 comma and we are remaining with the verbose so let's put verbose equals to one all right so let's run it started so you can see like the accuracy matrix and it has started the pop All right, so our epoch training is completed. Um, for training this model, uh, we are using 20 epochs, first of all, and we are using a mini batches of 512 samples. Like this is a 20 iteration overall example. And in the X train and in the Y train tensors of all the samples, and while training, monitor the model loss and accuracy on the 10,000 samples for the validation set. So if, if we see our training 
validation law training laws that we had started from 0.9 and it kept on decreasing and our accuracy was uh, 49% then at um, the last we got is uh, the loss we got for training is 21% and accuracy is 91 and for validation set we had a loss of 61 and the accuracy to be 67 and at last we are getting a loss of 30 and validation to be 87 so it's nearly uh, almost nearby so our training set accuracy is 91 percent and our validation set accuracy is 87 percent so let's evaluate the model now let's see how the model performs uh, with our test set so to um, two values will be returned a uh, loss uh, which represents uh, a number which represents our error lower values are better and accuracy so let's evaluate the model for evaluating let's put up a code uh, results um, to model dot evaluate test underscore data dot batch of 512 of 512 and comma for oh sorry, sorry, for um, I forgot to put the verb equals equals to two and for name name comma value in zip model dot matrix underscore name comma result print print percentage s percentage point three plot value and percentage name comma value If you see we have a accuracy of 86 uh, percent like that's a fairly new approach that achieves an accuracy of about 87 percent so with much more advanced approaches the model should get closer around to 95 percent well uh, you can for further reading I will put up some links in the description that you can follow up if you want to learn learn more about transfer learning all right uh, this much for this tutorial thank you very much